welcome. I'm recording this for a uh, Shalal training day, but I hope we might share it with other people just to give a little bit of history of Shalal. So uh, on this image is some of our first photographs. Shalal started from a, sh a dance, a dance theatre company, originally called Seesaw, S-E-A-C-S-A-W. And then with Anna Murphy's help, we found the Cornish dialect word Shalal, which means a pots and pans band uh, played at a wedding in a village before or after the wedding. And I went to a Sajin Kalbuk sale and met a lady from the Lizard who said that, yes, they still used to do a shalal in their village. Um, later on, I talked to a, a Syrian friend and he said, in Arabic, it means waterfall. So we're very pleased to have the name shalal as a Cornish dialect celebratory word. Uh, we started in 1985 and some of the original dancers are here from some of our first shows. So there's Jamie Brown and Tim Churchman in the black and white photograph, and John O'Kinney and Shelley O'Burg in the colour photograph. The black and white photograph was our first try as a publicity photograph, and uh, the colour one is from Midnight Feast, our first uh, a show with original music by Roger Pinsent. This is um, a little sort of timeline. Anna Willis, my daughter, very kindly put together this presentation. So we began in 1985 and continued on as a weekly work experience community dance theatre company. Um, primarily the people we started with were from a gateway club, so they had uh, learning disabilities, but they, uh, Tim Churchman particularly put us forwards on our ethos of not using any labels about disability as he was by far the best dancer in the room, even when other visitors came to see us. Uh, from the very beginning, other people joined us. Marjorie Wilton, uh, later on Becky Appleby came for a while. Um, uh, Rory McDermott came. Lots of local artists came to join us because they liked the work. So we were, at that time, you know, we used words like mixed ability and words like inclusion. And now we say we aspire to access and equity. We don't always get it right, but we want to work in an equitable and accessible way for everybody. Um, when we started again after a break in 1999, I had, uh, 1999, I was about to have my third child, our um, wonderful administrator, Diana Morris from Newland Art Gallery's first education officer. Uh, she moved away, our small amount of money that we ran on ran out, and uh, it seemed a good time to take a break. So we stopped, and then we were invited to start again by a Healthy Living, Living Initiative in Penzance, which had an umbrella organisation of over 30 organisations that they were putting forward about health in the community. And within that, um, that funding, which we came under the umbrella of the Acorn Theatre for a few years until we were independent, we had to say how we were going to continue. And we'd always thought about becoming a charity and sort of shelved the idea. And so that idea was taken up. And in 2005, under Danny Fox as our manager then, we became a charity. It took us a long time to establish ourselves solidly as a tech charity and to learn how to do it from just being a community interest, community company. But we did manage it well. Um, we started then having community groups because we had no feeder groups into Shalal Dance Theatre. I'd worked as a freelancer. And so I knew lots of artists and lots of people and could invite them to join us but I was no longer doing that as I had young children. So we started up our first community group, Open House in Penzance. Later on from another Healthy Living Initiative, Friends and Dancing grew under Debbie and Ions as his inspiration. Um, at the time, this, was, this presentation was made in, only a year ago and we've moved on even from then. But at that time, we've had Open House in Medruth in different places. Uh, we now have uh, out there in this guard, and we have two other uh, community groups working occasionally in St. Orstor and in Newquay. The one in Newquay has just turned into an art and movement group, so that's an interesting progression. This, uh, this presentation was created for Farmers Art School, so it emphasises our cross-art form development, as you'll see as we go on. We had a fantastic music access group. For a while, which sadly, I mean, I'd love to restart, but sadly, funding ran out. Um, Schlau 2 started as a performance and community group in Falmouth as a progression from friends and dancing. 
Uh, we had Aiming Higher, which was a fantastic um, initiative in special schools, again by, led, led by Debbie and Irons. We started our annual Back Lane West residencies, um, and I'm going to move my picture so I can see when we started in 2014. We're very excited. We've been there nearly a decade. Shalal Studios started in 2012. Shalal Sketchbooks in 2013, inspired by an idea from a um, sketchbook project in, in Brooklyn in America. And we've done, through the pandemic, a film support group and wonderful works. We continue to develop our initiatives according to the artists we work with and uh, the artists we work with throughout the organisation, from grassroots up, so what people in our groups want to do, to what the visiting artists and facilitators are inspired by. So it's a really communal, collaborative um, unfolding, I suppose, an organic unfolding of what we want to do and where we want to be. So this is one of our first shows, Glimpses. It shows a sculpture made by a local, uh, Amanda Lorenz, a local artist. We did this down at, on the prom in Penzance. Uh, this was Shalal Dance Theatre. This is one of our first um, forays into um, a large art gallery to work. And we have worked in the upstairs art gallery at Newland Gallery doing our opening improv performance, which was fantastic. We loved it. This is how big we were um, before the pandemic. We're nearly as big as that again, but the pandemic had a huge impact on vulnerable people. Uh, so we still struggle for some people to be with us. Now, uh, these are the different groups. So we have Out There in this Guard, Friends and Dancing in Falmouth. Um, Shalal too works very closely with Farm with Art Gallery and we often perform there and Shalal too because it's um, five to half past six most most of our sessions are in daytime in the week uh, is really where we uh, love to have families and children we've had up to three families in it at different times and there are very few places where children and parents can explore an art form um, in, in an equal fashion and one of them isn't just sitting back watching the other or tokenistically being involved all the time. Uh, we had lovely, lovely Zoom meetings in the pandemic. And there's a wonderful art. I, think, I don't know if that's sketchbooks. I think that looks like a sketchbook uh, Zoom picture. And the other bottom one is uh, Lou. Lou. Oh, Lou, I've forgotten your name. I've forgotten your surname. I'm hopeless. Lou and Phoebe, who set up um, Shalal Studios which is fantastic. Lou Brett and Phoebe Barnicott. And that was our very great excitement of starting our, um, our opening our studio G8 at Crowd G Red Ruth, where we still are. 1997 Face to Face was one of my favorite shows and unfortunately got very little visibility. It was the last one before I left. Um, the Acorn Theatre was closed and we had the joy of going into Penrith College. This is Zoe Wilton um, and Roy McDermott is exploring sound in the background. He went on to explore the work he did with us to do Unspeakable Rooms, which toured the Tate with Alaric Summers. This is Zoe, 2012. We then um, we had a while of it's, it's quite expensive going into theatres. So we had a grand time um, doing heritage work, helped by Barbara Santi writing bids for us. And this was one at Godolphin House, which has the most fantastic doorway. Uh, it's a picture. So Marjorie always came with Zoe, and this was us celebrating Marjorie's 80th birthday. Uh, Shalal Dance Theatre for many years was based in St. Peter's Hall, Newlyn, and some of the time at the Acorn Theatre in Penzance. Uh, St. Peter's Hall, Newlyn has sadly now been closed, so we find ourselves at the centre Newlyn, not far away. And this is a beautiful painting that Zoe gave me of her and her mother. So starting now to talk about Zoe. So Zoe was a major influence in Shalal because she was one of the first people to join us and she stayed with us. Um, we, we, we found it at times we did something called shared spaces, which was totally to sort of um, showcase Zoe. So we had a uh, Victoria Field, a poet, Andrew Brown, a cellist, and we performed it in churches. It was improvised dance with poetry and improvised cello. It was lovely. 
So Zoe's done lots of work. Zoe's a multi-artist. There's a, more about her in the slideshow that you can see on YouTube. Uh, but these are just some pictures of her and showing her artwork, which she's always sold. Zoe and Phoebe uh, put together a wonderful, um, we decided to have uh, artist talks so we could learn more about each other. And this was uh, the first one with Zoe and Phoebe. I can hear music and expand. For me, art is light, power, and life. So I'm very grateful to work with Zoe. We've known each other a long time, and she is a phenomenal artist and drives forward a lot of our ideas. We have lots of phenomenal artists in Chanel. It's really a bit unfair to pick out particular people, but this was done for an art, art um, visual art and dance one. So uh, Eddie Callis wrote Realize Me. Um, and this we did a Zoom film to in the pandemic, and it's had a lot of views. It's great. Do watch it. Um, during the pandemic, we also managed to make this film, The Hands of Victor Hara. It took a long time. Uh, Terry Stevens uh, gave us her friend's uh, music, which was fantastic. And with her help in production, we made this film, Sapphire and Terry worked on it, visiting people in their gardens. It took a long time to organize. I think it took the most of the year to put it together, but it's a beautiful film with um, Adam. And we're very grateful to be able to have used the music and be supported in it. Again, I'm sorry, I forget names. Just to show some of the characters in Chalau and during the pandemic, our dear friend Trevor died. Trevor had started, um, in Shalala in a healthy living group. He then went on to Friends and Dancing, a healthy living group in Truro. He then went on to Friends and Dancing in Falmouth. And then he joined Shalal Dance Theatre. And he went between Friends and Dancing and Shalal Dance Theatre whenever he could. He travelled from St. Moore's originally and then travelled from Truro. Trevor was the most fantastic character and, and we love him dearly. And in memory of him, we did a little impromptu song and dance one day, which you can find on YouTube. Uh, so from impromptu and sort of spontaneous fun things, we also, uh, it's the, particularly being emphasised in the pandemic, the global crisis, we have been wanting to have our voice because the vulnerable people that we love and work with are the first people to be affected by it, as we can see in the global south. So I came across Donut Economics. This was made for COP26. Um, and I'm going to forget things now, but it was a feast initiative shout loud That's right. and was used by Kate Rowworth in a TED local TED talk so we were very pleased and proud about that so with our aim for access and equity uh we had BSL sign signing in this in the bottom corner uh this was also done in the pandemic and this is George and Sam so George and Sam met to um Shalal. Sam came into Shalal to open house in Penzance as a school leader and has been in Shalal Dance Theatre ever since. Sam is also a fabulous natural artist and was one of our first artists in um, our very first studios at John Daniel Centre, created by Laura Wilde. So uh, he and George uh, became great sort of mates and they go out and they do things once a week. And we sent round this large a roll of paper and some pens and some suggestions and this is what they did they went into the studio when there was no one there during the pandemic and created this wonderful piece and that's all the instructions on the side what they might want to do and this is very similar to some of the work we've been doing so we piggybacked off ideas that anna had through her um e-tech art and design course, things that she'd love to do and explore with movement and dance and gesture. And this, uh, they, they enjoyed it so much, they went on. And this is Sam and um, Dylan, who now looks a lot older, Dylan's 19 now. This is, shows you how quickly we all grow up. And this is them doing their street treehouse vlog. Beautiful. They did that again in Crouching. 
So while we were on the pandemic, we wanted to sort of keep exploring things and making things. So Debs and, and Anna, who had worked together in the past, but had no um, conversation about this, we had some original music by Dar Darcy Hodgkinson, which he kindly allowed us to use. And I sent it out to people and said, please just film yourselves in the garden or outside or wherever, and let's see if we can make a film for it. I wasn't able to make a grand compilation film that I thought of, but I was able to add a few things together on iMovie. And this is one of them, and it's rather beautiful if you get a chance to watch it. So this is charting our wonderful annual backclaim res res residencies. And things come around in circles. And Laura Menzies, so you can see on the bottom left, we are now actually working with at the tape. So that's fantastic. So we just went in. And the first of all, we just thought, let's work big. Let's just get in there and work big. What can we not do? We usually sit down. People have A4 pieces of paper in a, in a room. That's easy to do, or a small piece of craft. What you don't have is a lovely big room to just start making and creating things. And each time we did different things. So there's Toby, Melanie, Sam's work. And then we put together, it was a wonderful opportunity for collaboration. So fine artist, Jamie Mills, photographer, Oliver Raymond Barker, musician, George Clampier, dancer, star. Went in for a couple of days and had a wonderful time. Um, we still work with star, with George. George has gone on even to dance last weekend with Ollie, Ollie lent me his studio because I was stuck for the Zoom meeting. That's one of Ollie's photographs. So it's a real time to play, a real time to explore, to go deep into our work, to share things, to work across art forms, to work across groups, to invite in new people. We hadn't really worked with Jamie before George wanted to invite him in because he loved his work. So it's fantastic. It just is a really brilliant time of year for us. This is um, Joan Gaby who came down and, and had a short residency within our residency, um, re-emerging into her art practice. And then we started working big. So these are things that now relate more to the work we're doing and more to the talk that, that we gave about marks and movement. So here we are, we started drawing big on the walls and painting. I don't know if it goes into, yes, and then we got carried away the next year and thought, oh, why not? Let's just use the whole room as a canvas. So yes, that was fun. So just togged up, all ready to make a mess. People's beautiful big paint marks on the wall. And sometimes people who've never painted start painting. And sometimes people who've always drawn very small draw very big and there's just the room to have real fun and experiment. So we brought in this is an out there group from Liscard coming in and we thought let's explore line. Got a little bit crazy but also quite wonderful so we just played with line with tape and improvisation and created wonderful spaces. So we work in embodied space is one of our um, projects which is our open improvisation, now called Spontaneous Response Performance. And we did this one in the Minette car park. Wonderful place in Minette, highly inaccessible, but we had a great time. And things lead on to things. So from this uh, rather windy day in a wild, rather wild sort of picnic setting on the grass in the car park where we're improvising to live music and recorded music, uh, Pete Freeman saw us and we went on to work with him in the future. This is also embodied space at Kessel Barton, which was a highlight for us all. Barbara captured some of it on film. But basically in a wildflower cowslip meadow, we did an opening prof to Ionaudi Spring. And it was fabulous. You could see people echoing each other across the whole field. And it was a typical Cornish day with a gray sky and splattering of rain. And it remains a highlight in our hearts for me. Uh, this was the embodied space on the very first photograph, one of the ones the company we showed that we then did in Newlyn Art Gallery. This is when we went on to work with Pete Freeman, who we'd met in the embodied space at Minute Theatre. Sculpting with light, talk and QA with light artist Pete Freeman. And just wonderful to change the space with colour and music. Quite often it was with George improvising. So 
was an amazing thing to do. I loved it. Music session with George, Eddie and Stuart. Shalal Studios got more involved in this one. You can see puppetry, film and all sorts of things coming. We then, uh, during the pandemic, had a commission from um, Newland Art Gallery, which was fantastic, uh, in your hands, where they placed um, an artist at distance with a local group. So we were placed with um, Arinda Dufin, who's a fantastic Ugandan poet and performer. And we had wonderful Zoom conversations while she was traveling on ro long roads in Uganda, and we were all sitting on Zoom in Cornwall. And from her inspiration, people created a wealth of work. So we had sketches um, as we came in. We had a wonderful film put together um, by Bobby Johnson at the end. We had the lovely treehouse picture. We had portraits. I've forgotten names. Um, and poetry and film. And so there was this whole installation because of the ideal the idea was that people could have maybe got together to do a performance and that wasn't going to happen because of Covid in the end. So this was like a deconstructed show um, with the background work as well and we were very happy with that. It shows you more of it there. Some of it was work that people just did at home, other people, work that people did while we were talking. Uh, we put out the sort of the direction and we've got such a wealth of artists who get such different things back, it's fabulous. So we then took Embodied Space on and um, we know, so we, we'd, Anna and I had given a talk at the Tretiakov Gallery in Moscow um, some years ago at, in, at that sort of um, community education exhibition and outreach. And they're a fantastic gallery, a really wonderful heart. And um, and so we wanted to find ways to work together. We couldn't find any funding. And sadly now with the world situation, that's really not going to happen for a long time, I imagine. But we managed to do um, live stream. So we were so excited. So we were in the top uh, gallery in, um, in the Newland Art Gallery. And thanks to everybody's technical efforts, we live streamed to a group of artists at the Tretiakov Gallery and were able to have a Q&A with them afterwards. So that was wonderful. And um, everyone was very excited. It's one of our first, we were getting back into the room performing together events. Just going to slip back there because in our training we're going to talk about our open improv um, instructions or suggestions and and it's just to say so what you have is you, you have structure freedom and intent the structure is you're in a room with all these people you have the freedom within that structure to do what you want if you can do it with intention and the uh, guidelines for the for um, performing are uh, you can do your own thing, you can work with others, you can be still and you can get off the stage and the other thing is to try and make it look good according to what everyone else is doing. So that wonderful freedom, especially being able to do what you want to do if you're inspired, but always within the greater whole. So a bit like anyone who's watched our podcast, Patrick Geddes, pe people and community it's not all about the individual. It's not all about the collective. It's the point in between. It's the person and the collective working really well together. So, and trying to make something beautiful together. So people support each other. People do their own inspiration. People hold beautiful stillness while someone else is moving fast. But it's all made in the moment decisions, which allows everybody equal access and equity in what they're doing. Uh, so this is Toby, who is, uh, like Zoe Wilson, an amazing all-round artist in Chanel. And I think this we put this in just to show how we were making things from the very beginning. So we had um, 
uh, a show called Chromatic and we'd done it with Farm with Art Gallery and we were looking at frames and, and, and photography and different things and Toby just went away at that time and made this amazing, beautiful frame. He also, um, he might have even been the same show, I'm really forgetful, I'm afraid. Yeah, Chromatic, 2011, got filmed at, um, uh, at Amata and actually the film for this I think is on Vimeo. Anyway, Toby made this wonderful hanging, beautiful, out of cardboard, interlocked and painted. There's the barge in the chair as well. Toby also made this wonderful, I'm sorry, but my words have completely failed me for names today, so I'm just going to give a general apology. I think he calls them Organa. Or when I'm going to... Anyway, it's the sort of... Um, Farm with possible Loch Ness monster. So, isn't she beautiful? This beautiful sea creature, as well as his outfit and his headdress. So, she came along to our performance. This was the doorway's performance at Princess Pavilion's Gillian Jean Gardens. I'm not sure it was a doorway's performance. Forgive me, I can't remember which show it was. It was fun. Oh, no, it's just always, just always. And this was two eyes. This was an R and D, and we had great fun. And this is again Toby making a giant net with a giant flower. And I can't remember the details because there are more details to it. But isn't it brilliant? So he and Sam were there using this at our two eyes. Toby also went on to do um, the poetry illustrations for our book. So after about 30 years, we thought, do you know what? We've got quite a lot of poems. We work across art form. We've got quite a lot of poems that have been in shows. And we can't maybe show all of them, but we can put a lot of them together in a book. So this is a poem written by Zoe Wilton and illustrated by Toby. Again, this happened in um, COVID. We had wonderful plans to go out to do performing, to take BSL to um, literary festivals, to translate poems into BSL, to perform them. And that didn't happen, but we still wanted to do where well, we could make a poetry book. So we did a crowdfunder and we made a poetry book with Philly, which we're very grateful for. This was Helen Thompson, who was an amazing, again, cross art form artist who's now just died. just showing some of the work we do, some of the fun we have. So we've worked for years with Baba Santi, who was very supportive. That's everyone editing film and having a good laugh with her on the left. Uh, we have wonderful Christmas parties where we sing carol, lustily sing carols. Uh, we do a lot, this is us just discussing work and making ideas for a new projects. So we break up into small groups whenever we need to, to really capture things in detail. We work in circles nearly all the time feeding back every week what we're doing how we're doing what people want to do any news Chanel studios uh janet's had a wonderful um exhibition at grace hall a while ago and it's a phenomenal artist and i was extremely excited when she came to work with us because i met her through annex arts really early on when we did our very first dance and draw group in the community when Budic Hospital closed. It was that long ago, for those of you who have memories. And uh, I'd worked at Budic Hospital and done dance with people and I really wanted it to be able to continue when they left. So we set up with Archer, a group in the community. It had dance in the morning, people could have lunch together, and they had art in the afternoon. We often use, we still use that format a lot of the time. And Lisa Mortensen came along and then went to it. And then went off and did a wonderful similar project and it's arts at Trezillian, which Janet went to. Phoebe met Janet at Holyfield Farm and Janet came back in to do the wonderful art. And uh, Pam also came to us through the sketchbooks and Pam is in the, their painting. Pam did wonderful writing. So one of the wonderful things over the pandemic was we would sit all sit together and meet up more. Although there is always a problem of technological poverty which is really difficult. And for some people, you know, Zoom lifting is not accessible or not comfortable, but we, I really enjoyed our time with Pam. Um, 
the sketchbook project has had many sort of phases. It's in, I think it's fourth phase now uh, with Janice, but it originally was with Victoria and then it was with um, Kerry. And then it was with Claire Mail, who did wonderful work with it, especially through the pandemic. They all did wonderful work, but Claire's was especially through the pandemic. And especially outreaching to sort of wellness and health and well-being. Um, and so this lovely film with Adam Drake was made through that time. I'm really uh, excited by sketchbooks. It's a very easy way in. It's a bit like open house as a way into performance as a way in. It can just be for itself or it's a way into the studios to working in Schlau to further things. So it's a fantastic uh, option. So Lee Jacobs very kindly got in touch and said we wanted to work with Shalal. So here we are working with Shalal. Thank you very much, Lee. We loved it. Um, Mark Movements and Conversation, we called it. So people sat down with pieces of paper sometimes with music, sometimes without, and they made marks and they moved and it was fabulous. We had two sessions of it and uh, it was mainly drawing with charcoal and then sometimes um, pigments, earth pigments were added. And there is the advert for it. Marks moved in some conversation with Shalal. There were two workshops, one on Penry University campus um, building, graphic drawing building, and one in Belmont. It was at the Goldfish um, Bowl, and there was a performance. And you can see an edit of that. It was with original music, and you can see an edit of that in YouTube. Uh, we've gone on from this. This was a wonderful opportunity, and I'm sad that in this slideshow, uh, we, obviously, it was just before the exhibition went on, so you can't see the hangings, but the hanging, the exhibition itself was beautiful, really stunningly beautiful, and all the hangings were from the ceiling and some on the wall, and you could move through them as they did in the performance. So, thank you for listening. We are now going on to the Tate, where we've done similar but different work, and uh, it came out of Back Lane West Residency last year, and that's going to be on the 25th and 26th of November. So if you hear it before then, enjoy. Thank you for listening. <laughs>